Chapter 4 Dinner with the Moodwills Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. Ilona. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change, relied on it even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. So I could tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you live? I live with my grandma. Over on the other side of the river. My grandma, where are your parents at? Back manners. It's alright. My dad passed away in an accident to fertilizer plant six years back. Oh dear. My mom's been missing for a few months now. Like missing, Luke's missing? Were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nellie was the one who eventually broke the silence. Okay, how did you like the pizza? Oh, it was good. Very good. Normally we would have put more effort into Ilona dinner. Nervously gestured toward the boxes. Manfully settled in and... Beck had mentioned that it's your favorite. I'm sorry, are we just skipping the part where he said his mom was missing? Beck. Sorry, look at this move has us all a little tired. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. No, it's fine. So Beck said that you moved here for work. Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. Ow. Oh. I mean, what brought you here to Beacon Pines? Oh, you were right the first time, we're here for work. Nelly won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. But Ilona Harvest just made her their newest lead research of deep engineering. She makes it sound more impressive than it is. Didn't I have something about deep engineering? I'm just happy that I get to make a difference in the world. Perennial Harvest is at the forefront of the world in agriculture. It is something more useful than sprinkling water and ex ex excrement on the ground. Luca glanced over to Beck. She seemed to be holding her breath. What Nelly means, Luca, is that there are different ways to grow plants. Yes, yeah, some people talk to their plants and hope for the best. And some people happily leave their job to allow a loved one to pursue their dream. Excuse me. <laughs> you swore you didn't. Slammed her fist into the table. What is this drama? <laughs> Perhaps harder than she intended. Hey Luca, how about some dessert? I should have to meet my friend Rolo soon. Glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Looks like there's a storm brewing. Should get going. Oh, I didn't think there was any rain in the almanac. The yeah, almanacs aren't that useful around here. His mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Thank you all for the pizza. It really was good. See you at the festival, back. Wait up. I'll walk you home. Oh, how nice. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble break. Doesn't break means that it's uh, clearing up 
Rumble, Rumble. Let's go with Rumble. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. Yeah. Ominous. Sure we can make it home before the storm kicks off. Luca surveyed the roiling clouds. I'd say the odds are good. Maybe you should stay here and I'll just make a break for it. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. <laughs> Care to recalculate those odds? Pour inside you two before you catch cold. Oh, nice sleep or Canelli will keep trying to reach your grand on the phone. In the meantime, you do hold tight. Sorry, not much to do up here. Most of my stuff is still in the boxes. Mind if I poke around? Be my guest. This looks wild. What is it? Gum. Luca Gum. The slide with his fingers to get a better look. I'm tracking the structural integrity of gum with increasing amounts of chewing. Chew that one for 47 days. <laughs> um. Luca wiped his hand off on his sweater and gave a nervous laugh. It's not weird. It's unsanitary. <laughs> You think it's weird, don't you? A little. But weird can be cool. Oh well. Oh and I were idea just like this at that tree house. Probably not exactly like this one. My mom and I tore the whole thing down to the bolts. Fitted with some state of the art vacuum tubes. Seems pretty awesome. She gets carried away sometimes. I think she feels guilty for working too much. So once she does have time for me, she showers me with high tech overcompensation. Luca flicked at one of the toggles. I bet you can get all sorts of stations on this. When I was here in the boonies, you wouldn't believe the stuff I could pick up back in the city. But around here it's all farm reports and static. Oh shucks. Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. He flipped open the attached card. Happy trails from Coach Walker and all the fair view condors. Well you were kidding about popping around, huh? No oh, sorry, was this from your skull school? Most recent one, yeah. Some schools gave me going away cards. Some did flowers. But they were really trying to feel good about themselves, they do both. So you moved a lot. Yeah, that's the thing with having a brilliant parent. There's always a better jump somewhere else. These flowers will last longer if you put them in some water. That's the sort of thing I would do if I cared. Well, I cared enough to keep them as all. Well. Oh, you, you cared enough to keep them so. Can I ask you something? Of course. Dang, didn't that hurt? I'll be honest, that hurt more than I expected. But at least you look cool doing it. Becca took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Do you ever feel alone? Yep, all the time. Like even when people are around. Well, a robot can be pretty absent-minded sometimes. I'm serious. Does it ever feel like your family doesn't care what you want? I didn't used to feel that way. I know Gran loves me, but sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at... a problem? A deep breath, exhaling slowly. I know the feeling. How do you deal with that? It's pretty heavy stuff. I guess I haven't yet, but one thing my dad told me when I was little, don't hold a grudge, especially against yourself. If you try to hold on, hold it all in, uh, you're gonna pop. 
So then what do you do? When you don't know what to do. That never go, got to that part. Something I figured out on my own though. You gotta do something. Anything. Here. What are you doing? I don't know, something. I'm gonna register our complaints with the storm. Listen to your miserable universe. Stop jerking me around. I just want things to go back to the way they were. Everyone tells me it's gonna be alright. But things are gonna change. Every time something changes, everything gets worse. Screw this town. Wow. <laughs> Let me try. Moving sucks. I hate it. I hate that I hate it. Why can't I just deal with it and be happy for my mom? Why can't we just stay somewhere? Bruh. I just want to be a normal kid. Off her shirt and straightened up. There. I actually feel a little better. As abruptly as it began, the storm abated. Thanks, I needed that. Me too. Should let out before the rain starts up again. Should I woke you out? See you in a row at the festival. Sounds good. Luca? Don't let the universe jerk you around. Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. Oh, how cute. Chapter 5 Friendly Feud. Friendly Feud? The air was heavy with the hard rain's residue. The smell of wet things. Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. He'd never shared those details about his dad with anyone, not even Rolo. But it's not like this changed anything. Rolo was still his best friend. Adding Beck to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. This is what Luca told himself as he headed to the treehouse. True, true, true. Oh, but I wanted the girl to walk me home. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. What's she up to? Hey, don't track down a lead. You bet. But a juicy new rumor. Since Alan Sharper Valentine died, he left behind a peculiar last will and testament. Peculiar how? He didn't just give his kids an inheritance, there were conditions. Like what? The document stipulated that Harris had to take on a child as her ward. What? A kid our age who just showed up to town one night with a lawyer. Solomon? Bingo. So Harris was forced to take care of him. Yep, or she would have lost everything. I wish Sharper ca cares so much about some random kid. Who has it? Oh, Sharper sowed some wild oats. That explains the way Harris treats him. Poor Solomon. How did you find all this out? A good reporter never reveals her source, Luca. Alright. Hmm. Better not dilly dally. Gotta go to the tree house. Okay, fine. Can I get the purple mushroom? Nope. Hmm. This place is pretty cool at night, isn't it? Excuse me, what are you doing? Just looking out for the night, sir. Oh, wonderful. Can only assume this means all festival preparations have been completed ahead of schedule. I'm not exactly, sir. The storm set us back a bit and it's getting late, so we all decided to... You all decided? Yes, sir. I wasn't aware that your job involved deciding things. 
We're all here at Perennials Fest Harvest because we believe in creating a better future, yes? Yes, sir, very much, sir. Do you want to be the one that tells this town that we failed them? No. That we gave up because there was a little rainstorm and we all got sleepy? Of course not, sir. Good, then it's decided. <coughs> yes, sir, I will work till the task is done. See that you do. Our harvest awaits. Get some high tech doors for. Don't fit in with this kind of town, do they? Well, are you still up there? Sir Earl isn't accepting visitors at the moment. Come back, Maybe never. I only ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times, and it always meant one thing. You're upset. Makes you say that, maybe because my best friend abandoned me for no reason. I didn't abandon you. I'm just a little late. Scoffed. The rain helped me up. Liar, you weren't even home. What? The storm got bad and I got worried, so I went looking for you. Imagine my surprise when I made it to your house and you weren't there. I hadn't made it back yet. I'm not a fool, Luca. It doesn't take all day to deliver some jam. No, I... The storm rolled in and out of nowhere. And I got stuck after dinner at Bex. Lucas stumbled on his words, knowing he'd said too much. Beck? Dinner? What the heck is a Beck? She's a new kid in town. She's actually kinda cool. You'll like her. She needed help convincing her parents that she'd made new friends. New friends? Spend all day waiting for you. And you're worth making new friends. Sound like that, Roma. You know... While I was waiting, I made some upgrades to mission control. It was gonna be a surprise, but you took so long, the storm knocked it all down. Just like you knocked down our friendship. What does that even mean? Luca became instinctively angry in response. Both boys were now shouting across the distance. It means you're a bad friend. You don't care about me. Of course I care, you ass. I knew you'd get in trouble waiting so late for you. But I kept my word, because that's what friends do. Oh, wow, what a noble sacrifice you made. Easy for you to say. Your ground doesn't even care. You can stay out as long as you want. And you wouldn't even get in trouble. Seriously? You're acting like I chose this? If that's what you think? Then maybe you're the bad friend. changed to a calm, yet more intense anger. Maybe Pa is right. Storm bring more than water. This one brought out the real Luca. Stop quoting your past nonsense like it means anything. Well, at least my Pa is still around. Hung in the cold night air. Damn. Holy shit, the kids in this game are the relentless. Dropped, knowing he'd crossed a line. But it was too late. Look, I... Good night, Rolo. Dang it. That was fucked up. Damn. 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 I guess so and go back to sleep. No? Luca dug through his old stuff, not even sure what he was looking for. Rolla, what a jerk. Call me a bad friend. Oh, I'm Rolla, look at me. And my amazing family. Just never supposed to make new friends. So sad. Grand cooed gently from the hallway. You slept straight through the breakfast. Look, are you alright? I'm fine. Just don't feel like getting up yet. Okay, I'll leave this oatmeal by the door. 
I'm gonna run out and take care of some things. Okay. Back later to check in. Sure. He just wanted to be alone. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. So sad. Girl is still gonna go to the festival. Hmm. It's gonna be miserable. Probably thinks I'm still going to the festival with him, he can show it. What should I do? Go back to sleep? I don't get over it, man. That's <laughs> slam. Okay. So you didn't eat your oatmeal? Wasn't hungry. Well, just in case you get hungry, I'll leave you here. I'll send it here too. Rollo came by. What did he say? He wanted to talk to you. What did you say? I told him you weren't feeling well. Good. So your plan is, your plan is to just sit in your room all day? Pretty much. Well, I need to pop away again for a minute. We decide to end your pity party and go outside. I think uh, it'd do you some good. Luca Noted. Luca still couldn't bring himself to go out. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. See the sandwich, you feel better. No, it was never anything interesting at the festival anyway. What's that? Oh. Nice. The Adventures of Hank Atomic. Complete first volume. Open the cover and begin to read. Now he's gonna read about the Hank Atomic and his best friend or something. And it'll get him inspired to fix the situation with Rolla. Or something. I received it for his birthday. Hardcover edition with behind the scenes commentary and bonus art. Rolo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rolo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. Whatever the reason, Luca didn't mind, but it had stayed right there where Rolo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway. Luca? My little friend came to see you. A girl named Big Melody. Melody? Or something? She said you met yesterday? What did she say? Is she here? She was just dropping by. I told her you weren't taking visitors today. Oh. She seemed nice. Yeah. Had a fight with Rolla, didn't you? Can I come in? Maybe later, alright then. I'll have dinner on the kitchen table. In case you want bed before Without bedtime. Realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. He once again felt the weight of it all and allowed his weary eyes to close. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. He looked up at his father standing beside him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad, where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source? Luca's eyes followed his father's gesture. In an instant, he was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. The figure's voice was a scratchy echo. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame. See? Luca peered at the base mm. of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. 
was Beacon Pines itself. Oh god. Tiny buildings, freezing and crumbling as they were consumed by flame. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them. The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them, not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up, grabbing its helmet with both hands. With a jolt and a twist, the suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of torpid mist escaped. Slowly revealing the face within. Luca's own face looked back at him, older, worn. Oh God. The sensation was oddly familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Luca staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Welp, Dad. If you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames in a flash of cold light. He was gone. What does all of this mean? Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Uh -huh. Luca woke up to see a hazy figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh -huh. Mom? No, dear. It's on the grand. Luca rubbed his eyes. The kind, concerned face of his grand came into focus. How are you feeling? Fine. Anything you want to talk about? I don't feel like talking. It's just as well. How about you sit there and listen a bit? Whatever you and all are fun about doesn't matter. Grand hey. Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. Fights between friends happen. What was said doesn't matter. The important thing that it's not the last thing you ever say to each other. But you said stuff about that. Or do you think he meant it? No. He was just mad. Mm. Did you mean any of the things you said to him? No. Good. We must appreciate friends in their best moments and accept them in their worst. Now get your butt out of bed. Festival's today. You don't want to miss it, Dad, do you? I guess not. Seems like a good opportunity to make amends with Rova, doesn't it? Gave a reluctant nod. So buy him a corn dog and apologize. But he's the one that... What did I just say? Buy him a corn dog. It's a good boy. Everything's better with corn dogs. I need to get going now. Got some last minute festival and business to take care of. Come find you at the fountain a little after lunch. Alright. I love you, Luca. Love you too. Luca took a deep breath. Okay. 